Like a moth to a flame, it pulls us in. Next thing we know, we're in a now bear's den. Tomorrow, I know it all begins again. But where we're needed, we will go. And I will. This is Adam with Demi Plane, and welcome to this week's episode of Heroes of the Plains. We are terribly excited to be here and to see where the chaos is going to take us next. We've got some returning sponsors that we want to be sure to call out here. Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. We have a new chess code for this week. You can see it there on the screen, and I think it reads something uh, pretty wild, I think, this week. Vivo Drop. I'm going to say chaos there. <laughs> That's not how you pronounce that. Vivo drop chaos. So drop chaos seems very, very appropriate for tonight. So get in on the code that we have there. We've got Talon and Claw returning. They are going to do uh, be providing our giveaway tonight for another dice vault. These things are truly incredible. I've got one here and it is just fine craftsmanship uh magnetic i love the pop that goes on there so you can win one of those pay attention to chat and you will have all the instructions for how to enter that as we get a little further into the show and then we have sirenscape providing all the sound and music for us tonight because epic games need epic sound and then we have one other shout out that i want to uh you know call up and, and i think we might have a graphic that we can uh, throw up on the screen for this one too but we have Quest for the Cure, which is a charity that focuses on Duchenne muscular dystrophy research, and they are doing incredible work raising money for this uh, this organization. Saturday, April 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, there is going to be a game with some luminaries raising money for this cause on twitch.tv slash team squad up. So check that out, April 24th. Uh, we've got some uh, friends involved in that. We wanted to be sure everybody knew about that. The cast does include, as you can see here, uh, Ed Greenwood, creator of Forgotten Realms. So uh, lots of lots of great players for an incredibly worthy cause there. Check that out on April 24th. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Todd. Let's get started. I'm still busy writing this adventure. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's time. Uh, <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Heroes of the Plains. Uh, I am joined by this illustrious cast of wonderful human beings, including uh, our very own Penelope Half Pint, who happens to be playing Hope Lavelle. <laughs> We've got Lauren Urban, who's playing Orcaria Eldrex. We have Anne Bradford, who's playing Briv Stillmarrow. We've got uh, my wife, Megan Kenrick, who is playing Whittle, who has no last name that I'm aware of. And then we've got, of course, Mr. Freely being played by Mr. B. Dave Walters and uh, Lindra Sauerbrand being played by Jen Kretschmer. So previously on our adventure, Chaos, you found yourselves in an, well, you were sent on a mission by the Norns uh, from Asgard to uh, rectify alternate timelines. Those timelines uh, are... Uh, variants caused by several wishes that you made a long time ago and you found yourselves in Waterdeep in Faerun but an alternate Fer Faerun where Orkira Eldrex was not a dragonborn but a full-fledged dragon trying to save the city from an ocean of dead uh one second uh so <laughs> We've got some music playing. Uh, <laughs> uh, apparently, I am distracted by the pretty music. Uh, <laughs> it's at that time that you realized what had happened here was the same kind of calamity you had seen on another world 
you went into Undermountain to find the last apparently living people on all of Faerun, as well as you communicated to Orkara Eldrex the dragon, and after lots of debate and lots of conversation with Orkara Eldrex as a dragon, convinced her to let everyone go. And currently you have been freely and little has repaired the spell jammer. You set fire to an entire pile of werebats, including we learned a lot about guano, especially Adam Bradford did. And uh, yeah, you've acquired a large ruby with the purposes of summoning a god to rectify this ocean of death that has covered the entire planet. What is everyone doing? You find yourselves, I believe, uh, inside Undermountain in the Spelljammer, if I'm correct. I just took out Strahd's throne out of my bag of holding and plop it onto the ground and get all settled in. And, uh, get my uh, things from my werebats, make some friendship necklaces. Um, friendship we, necklaces, do, yay! I mean, I'm, I'm totally for friendship necklaces. That sounds awesome. But don't we have to go and uh, do the thing? Yeah, um, we, we definitely need to, you know, wipe out all life on the surface of this planet. But uh, uh, real quick. Uh, I'm, unlife, I'm kind of, unlife. Uh, I'm not uh, wiping yeah, out uh, any life, just un unlife. Unli unlife. But I mean, there's like plants and stuff that are, that are not <laughs> going to make it. Um, but question, uh, I don't know how Storm Herald functions, but this Nautiloid is apparently a bit on the fragile side. Do Can, can we like summon it? Can we just like call it or something? Like how? Well, can, can we get back to it without having to fight all the Asgard? I mean, I don't... Can we? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Freely, you used to kind of be a mind flayer, right? Isn't there some kind of hive mind you can use to communicate with it? Isn't that how it works? <laughs> so, it's just like, it's, uh, plugging in's not the hard part. Uh, unplugging is the hard part. Um... But I mean, I don't know. I, I I could see if we can, can I don't know, remote connect or something. I, I would like to see if there's any way I can access Storm Herald. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Penelope. Nice uh, fang friendship necklace for you. I love it. Thank you. And then she gives one to everyone else. I will say I walk over to Briv. And I unsheath my meteor sword, and I hand it out to him. Thou I hast st a meat sword? Meteor! It's made out oh. of spice rock! <laughs> well, I mean, I carve meat with it, so maybe? Kind of? Um, but I hand it to him, and I say, uh, you know, I trust all of you with my, my life, and you've never let me down, but if this goes poorly, and maybe that switch back to the Elder Brain gets flipped a little too strongly... I know I can count on you to do what you got to do. To be clear, yes, thou art saying uh -huh. that if something goes wrong with what thou art about to do, right, that I am to kill thee or try. Yeah, uh huh. And I just slap him on the arm. There is no try. Yeah. Is it? Can I ask a question? Do, do we need to do this now, or can we wait until after? Well, my concern is the Nautiloid will get will us out in up. time. Yeah, that. Well, I thought you were going to take the Nautiloid because it, it can go into space, right? Well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, of course yeah, it occupies yeah. space. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to, like, take a shot at doing the cleansing and call Storm Herald second, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we kind of had, you know, some options uh, before. Oh, okay. I really want to throw my vote into fighting all of Asgard. Well, that's that's a that's a definitely an after this thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're worried about the ship not being able to go to space, because that's what I figured would happen. You'd all get in the ship, go to space. Right. We'll yeah. take care of the undead. I'll send you ascending when it's done, and then you come back. But if you don't think that that's gonna be an option, you remember when we ran that thing like d down um, uh, back in Port Argent, where we were like underwater in that thing, and Sophia like bolted a machine gun to the outside and compromised the whole integrity, and we were like, <laughs> we're all probably gonna die now. Remember yeah, that? I, I, I taught her how to do that. It, yeah, uh, I don't think she was listening. Um, so we already <laughs> we we've had to do some patchwork on the Nautiloid uh, twice, twice now, and we're gonna find out the hard way when we leave the atmosphere if we've done it wrong. <laughs> so. 
I just figured okay. maybe we're just giving a shot for Storm Hell. Let's try. You know, worst worst happen. Worst thing is not gonna come, right? That's that's the worst thing. I, I feel like the worst thing that the is... worst thing could be that I kill thee, as yeah. thou hast asked me to do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but no, no, no. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. How, uh, how precisely? Did I believe you, that. Did you intend on summoning it? Oh, I think between the Nautiloids systems and the remaining Mind Flayer bits in the Storm Herald and the remaining Mind Flayer bits in me, maybe I can just remote access it and just jump it here. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe. I, it's worth a try. Mind flare bits. Uh, you were like, you know, like you were unconscious when this happened. You were like this the whole time. It just, it just, it's the details are hazy. And I go over to the panel and I'm like, okay, all right, come on, luck. I'm like, I look at Penelope and I'm like, wait, lucky chest bump, lucky chest bump, bring it in. Mm. Okay, all right. And I go over to the, and I again would like to try and call Storm Herald. You're going to need a direct physical connection, so someone's going to have to jack you into it. Into oh. into the ship? Yeah. Man. Uh, I mean, can I do it with my artificial hand? Uh, like no. R2D2. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Robocop, but either one. Either it, one. It's going to have to be a physical connection in the area of your head. I don't have a lot of room in there, but okay. All right. Okay, all right. I was going to yeah. say, because I still got that uh, Mind Flayer tendril jump rope, but that doesn't seem like it's going to work here. <sighs> uh, uh, Alindra, Alindra, just like, you know, <laughs> crazy yeah. here. Um, have you by chance seen anything about this moment? Like, does this go terrible? Or uh, you don't have to tell me if it goes well. Just tell me if it goes poorly. I am not sure of this moment. <laughs> Oh, I don't okay. think any of us are. It is <laughs> always so convenient when she has not foreseen it. That's true. That is just, just you know, I, I uh, well, I mean, I guess if she told me this was coming, I might not have agreed to do it. Um, okay, all right. Um, I guess I go over. We've established there's still like remaining like tendrils and things in some of the panels, right? Yes. <sighs> okay. And remember at home, you only miss the shots that you haven't foreseen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm like, you know, that's okay. I don't, I don't really remember too much of my childhood anyway. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what precisely do I have to do? Uh, yeah, you're just gonna have to like, kind mm -hmm. of like one of the tendrils has little, like a series of spiky bits Ugh. that you just have to press into your skin. I hate it to part. make some kind of electrical connection to your Oh, uh, this, part, this part's always terrible. Don't worry, Freely, I've got you. I'm going to hold his hand. While Penelope <laughs> holds his hand, can I come over? Um, having experience also with mind flares and being a healer, can I, I assist in this surgery? Uh, you can make a medicine check. For what okay. it's worth, I hold Penelope's hand with my flesh halfling hand, and I hold this thing with my electric, with my mechanical hand in case it like shocks me or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, really hold, really still. Let me take a look at a couple of things here. Yeah, no, and this... I rolled a 23. I will just say, Todd, just real quick, when she leans in, I see her inspecting me, and I just say, You're summoning the Phoenix to destroy another planet, and I'm rejoining the Elderbrain Collective. This is a day, huh? Yeah, yeah. We really need to just, like, yes, it has been a day. Please hold still. I got you. <sighs> is, is this really the best solution? Are we no. probably you have not, another... When has that ever stopped us? We could us? try and contact Avon, who's on the ship. That Do sounds want... like a, a humongously worse idea. <laughs> I actually... Uh, and I'm gonna take a. Do, do you do you have any sendings left? Because I can do two. I I do, certainly. Would I'm like, like still to, holding Freely's like hand. To, before we before we <laughs> infiltrate Freely's brain, uh, that option always will exist. But the, the tentacle is writhing in your hand. Freely, tell the less <laughs> invasive option first. I look over at Freely. I, I think that's a kind of a good idea. I mean, this is obviously the last plan on the list, so yeah. He <laughs> is already going to do it. I say just let the little fellow do it. Alindra, we'll Freely's wait the 30 choice. seconds can, for your can, 25 words, and I'll can, I'll... can you even call a simulacrum? He, like, doesn't, like, live. It's a creature. 
I mean, yeah, I'd rather not do this, so sure. <laughs> also, we have other friends on, on Storm Herald. Oh, that's we right. Have our oh, we have that bartender. Yeah. Do they know how to fly the ship? Yeah, Harry, Say, Gentle can, George, can and Oscar are all there. Yeah. There's omniscient Bob or something like that. Wait, Oscar do we know the omnipresent. Can so. Averin fly the ship? <laughs> Probably. Was he wasn't on board. So. We'll give it a shot, sure. At least what's the worst that can happen in this case is we just find out, no, it's not going to work. I agree. Go ahead and give him a call. Um, I'm, I'm like <laughs> holding it Never just far enough away. Never do that again in my earbuds. You Someone made you it like this. It. <laughs> you made it like this, Todd Kendrick. I was content to not speak Mind Flayer today, but here we are. <laughs> no. All right, all right. Chad, what are you doing? <laughs> I cast Ascending uh, <laughs> to Avrin. Uh, we are stuck in Waterdeep. <laughs> we need to summon the Phoenix. Destruction imminent. Please come help. <laughs> That's a sentence. You and have bring been silenced, B Dave. You have been silenced. Can't hear you. Did you mention what plane we're on? This isn't like water deep, water deep. Do we know what Do we know? Uh and how do we describe it even if we did? And how would Snowball even understand it? Briv, I, please, I asked you, don't call him that. That's what he is. But I would appreciate it if you wouldn't I mean, call him that because it reminds me of being a simulacrum. So please. As, 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 a, as a former simulacrum dragon board, I can see how that would be a point of sensitivity. Yes. Very well, horns. I shall not <laughs> call him Snowball any longer. At, le at least I have horns. At least that is actually descriptive. I'll I take will, that. I will say in the moment when I'm like, this isn't water deep and Penelope's like, isn't it? You see for the first time, Freely looks scared because he's not, you, like it never occurred to him that actual water deep was overrun. <laughs> like, wait, no, no, no. This isn't like, this is like a water deep, but this isn't like water deep, right? How so, do you know? That's what happens with parallel dimensions. It is as much as ours is. As much as any other water deep is. Well, um, I hope he's a better pilot than I am. Okay, yes, sorry. Please proceed. Avery. Uh, Linda, you something. It feels very weird when you send off this sending, and it feels like it's echoing and kind of fracturing at the same time, and, and it feels different. And you probably have started to notice that all of your magic feels a little bit off, but when you're using any kind of communication, something's super off about how this is going. You almost hear yourself echoing back at yourself as you send this sending. And then you start hearing a hollow echo back. If you're getting this, I'm dead. I've been to a lot, but I think this may really be it. So Sophia and I made a, and then there's just an echoing. And it almost like sounds like just you hear noises and uh, weird le electric static. You, you think you hear the sound of a glacier cracking in the distance. And then you hear your own voices that you sent repeat back at you again. He made a snowball. I told you. The tentacle oh, continues to squirm eagerly in Freely's hand. Oh, and any, any, any luck? It's, there's some sort of message coming back from, from Avon saying that he's dead and he thinks this is it. And he and Sophia made something, but it's, it's reflect, reflecting and refracting somehow. Did, did, did you specify when you sent the sending that you're sending it to the Avon simulacrum? Yeah, I thought that was clear because we were talking about the one on. It the... was clear. Okay. Yeah. Did. Mm. Did Avon say anything about Sophia? Is she okay? Uh, not specifically. Just they made us something and didn't didn't. I couldn't catch the rest of it. Something. It sounded like a large crack glacier. Hmm. 
All right, is it worth sending to one of the other people on Storm Herald? Perhaps Bob. <laughs> Which one's Bob? <laughs> we got Ramble, Harry, Gentle George, and Oscar the Omnipresent. Don't send to Oscar, he's probably asleep. I thought there uh, was a Bob. Uh, also, if we... Sh is our plan to get them to talk to Avrin or fly the ship? Because if they get control of Storm Herald, there's no guarantee they're going to bring it here. <laughs> we kind of saved their lives, so I believe they owe us. We also kind of got them into the mess we saved them from. Tis true. Briv, I don't think the... I think they would try to help. I think Freely's got a legitimate question, which is, can they? I believe Bob can do anything. I mean, for what it's worth, I say save your magic, because if this goes poorly, you might need all of your strength for whatever's about to happen next. But uh, I trust you guys. You just say win. You stick in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're getting that mm -hmm. hit. No. Team, teamwork here. I just, I spared you the noise because I mean, I'm not so a monster. I, I, I certainly know about higher level spells. I mean, Orkira was going to cast a spell to make it possible for us to return to Storm Herald or make Storm Herald return to us. So clearly there's magic that does that. I should be in character, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, sorry, something in my throat. What, what yeah, happened no, the it's, 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 there, it's, Lindra? It's, it's the nodloid air filtration the, the system. Too much methane. The yeah. sounds of yeah. the mm -hmm. universe. There's, there's a parallel ra reality where I'm a... I don't, you you, you I sound like a strange accent. This um, continent I've been to way out west. <laughs> I hate to interrupt you all, but we kind of have a planet to destroy, so could we uh, move this along? <laughs> Just stick it in thine head, and I shall kill thee if it goes wrong. All right, last call. Do you have some magic to solve this well, problem? I was asking if there are things we would know about how to do this. About communicating across multiple planes of existence through reality? No, no. The fact is, we know that Orkira has a magic that allows her to summon things back to her. I, it's, the other, it's the other way around. Well, if I had it's... cast the thing, I could I could have gotten us back there, but I haven't Why had a chance to cast it. Why didn't thou not cast it? Because uh, we got kind of distracted by everything. You do realize that we've only been together for less than 24 hours, right? It feels like much longer. It feels it's like day. it's been months. Yeah, it's been a very, very long day. If we get back to Storm Herald, I promise the first thing I will I will word a recall. Um, I couldn't do that now anyway because I've used up that that spell. The moment she says that, when she's like, I couldn't do it anyway. Into the dome. Uh, you and I am helping. I'm still see you see freely physically spasm and someone's going to need to hold him down his eyes go completely white uh, like no, iris is just disappear really, really? i'm gonna push um his right shoulder down as hard as i can okay like, i get his left shoulder All i'm right. i'm behind his head trying to make sure that nothing gets jabbed that shouldn't be jabbed penelope make Real a strength check with advantage because whittle is helping you oh boy what what is the temperature of Freely's skin right now? Is it cold to the oh, touch? Oh, it's cold and clammy. Mm, it's a twelve. <laughs> you're, you're able to hold hold him down though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Freely, what is your favorite place in the universe? <laughs> I still haven't made it to the plane of ice cream and milkshakes. So <laughs> <laughs> gonna We're gonna that. get you there. I promise. You see a sprawling, endless plain of ice cream and rivers of chocolate milkshakes. You see sprinkles. I you knew see it! Some sort of like, uh, elk made out of candy canes just kind of stop and, and address you and then run off into the distance. And everything smells wonderful and happy. Ah, this is awesome! Hey, they told me that this place actually had like a lot of monsters and stuff in it, but this just looks great. You see all of these giant, basically gumdrops, <sighs> just big ones, laying all over the place. Oh, just, oh man, just, no, 
Penelope's not gonna believe this. I mean, she will believe it. She's seen it, but oh! And I just like reach down and try and like scoop up like a, a handful of of ice cream or whatever this is. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and what are you doing with it? I hid my divine sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, Art thou out ice cream or death? <laughs> yeah. This is my version of cake or death. So yeah, and yeah. divine yeah. sense tells you what? Undead celestials, fey fiends, or the unhallowed spell. <laughs> Und undead, undead, fey celestials, fey celestials. fiends, unhallowed spell. So like a bad place. Theoretically, I can detect the negative place. You well, yeah. You don't detect any of those things where you are. No, technically, no. <laughs> do I? I mean, I realize freely seeing what he's seeing, seeing. But do I have any chance of remembering my friends or my mission? Like, is there a check I can make or anything of that nature? Yeah, absolutely. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite not person in the entire people. universe? However, however, I might remind you, good sir, that I have uh, my intellect fortress up, um, oh. <laughs> which which my intellect fortress lasts. Um, it lasted an hour from when we went underground. So has an hour elapsed? Mm, uh, okay, roll roll something odd and even. Okay. <laughs> if it if it's odd, no. Oh, it was a six. So yeah, okay. <laughs> your intellect <laughs> fortress is still up. It all that does all that does is give me advantage on this. Like it doesn't okay. it doesn't. I'm, it, so hey, that's good. Advantage is always good. I'm like thank the maker for that because one of them was a two. Um, that is going to be an eighteen. Okay. Uh, yeah, you still remember everybody, and you find it strange. Feels like you've been in the, the plane of ice cream and milkshakes and candy for like a really long time, but then you suddenly remember all your friends again. Oh, oh, oh! Is Storm Harold here? Storm, Storm Harold! Storm, Storm Harold! <laughs> like it's a puppy. Yeah, yeah. Come on, really? you big old boy. Yeah. Really? Why are you yelling? I'm. A... <laughs> and you see Penelope behind you. Hey! No, just just play. You didn't tell me that this was this great. Yeah, this is my favorite place. I mean, everywhere is your favorite place. This is place, where I like to go uh, take all my friends. That's not true. I didn't like that really hot place uh, in the lower plains. That <sighs> was not so fun. Yeah, no, sorry. I wasn't there to help you with that because apparently I was a mind flayer at the time. And I... Do you want a gumdrop? <laughs> yeah, I want a gumdrop. <laughs> Have a gumdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm like, wait, where's everybody else? I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing some, wait, oh, uh, did they send you because Orkira wants to call the Phoenix? Oh, sorry, she's eating a gumdrop. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what was that? You the, want the, a gumdrop? Well, I mean, like, I feel like I should, like, you know, take care of business first, because, I mean, I'm here to get Storm Herald back, so, it's, uh. But we're friends. Don't you want to yeah. stay? Ah, but we're heroes, Penelope. You're, you're going to be coming with me. It's fine. Well, we're going to get Storm Herald. We're going to get out of here. We're going to save those people. And then we're going to get back to Asgard. We're like on our fifth subquest right now. I've kind of lost track of the thread of what we're actually supposed to be doing. But we're going to do it and get the Storm Herald. And then we're going to do it. You want help? I'm never going to let you go. No, you don't have to. We'll be together forever. We're going to live like a long time. <laughs> And then you see, like, in Penelope's hand is no longer a gumdrop, but a brain. Half eaten. Don't you want your gumdrop? We can be together forever. Just like old times. Remember? Uh, you're not Penelope, are you? Do you remember when we were one? <laughs> Okay, all right, okay, hey, <laughs> okay, wait a second. Um, <clears throat> Do you not feel lonely I, without I, purpose? I, I just need to call Storm Herald and I can go. We don't, ha we don't have to do this. Like, we don't, we don't, this, this doesn't have to happen. It has to happen. You helped us make it happen <gasps> to so many. Oh, that, that seems strong. Um... 
and I slide my sword out of my mechanical arm because I gave over my meteor blade, and I say, I'm pretty sure fighting with you right now is not going to change anything. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's a volcano of chocolate and sprinkles of rups behind you. <laughs> oh, man, this place does suck. Storm Herald! <laughs> where, where is it? Where is it? You tell me where it is, and I will go. Uh, go ahead and roll your intelligence. Do you have any kind of arcana as well? I actually have a little bit of arcana. Okay. He is a Thwathra, contrary because to popular opinion. the intellect fortress, I'm going to go ahead and give you advantage on this. Hey! Because the desire to do this is causing a connection. I'm glad, because that was a four, but got bumped to a dirty 20. <laughs> hey! Because <laughs> that was about to go poorly. All right. Meanwhile, somewhere in the universe, on Storm Herald, with uh, Ramble, Ramble the bartender, Tiefling, <laughs> Gentle George the Warforged <laughs> bouncer, Oscar the Omnipresent, all of Storm Herald apparently turns into a giant tuning fork and Bob. starts all of it making noise all at once. What do you say? <laughs> what, what do I say to them? Yes. You feel yourself connected like you can hear yourself echoing in your ears a lot. Okay, tune in to my signal, to me freely and Whittle also. She worked a lot on Storm Herald and jumped the ship to us. Tell Averin if he's there. Just go into the control room, think real hard about us and hit the switch. That's how we did it when we came to this snake tail place. Wait, wait, I'm confused. So what, what? You're, where? you're in Waterdeep? No, we're not. It's like a terrible version of it. No, it's, hey, I can't talk to you long. Just go into the circle, the summoning circle, where the we had the symbols. Think I was real hard about me and Whittle and hit the switch. That's, wait, what? That, I don't know if that's right. <laughs> so you want me to go into a circle and think really hard about you and Whittle? Yep. This... Listen, giant fortress, I don't necessarily like... I think I'm going to leave, because you are clearly haunted. Uh, it is going to be a long drop if you jump off of there, trust me. We'll drop you off at home, we'll build you a new bar. Briv said he's really sorry. Just I need you to move this along, because I'm about to have to fight for, you know, to keep my brain in my head. So if oh. you can move along, that'd be great. All right, giant fortress, I'm going, I'm going to go to the circle, and I'm going to think very hard about things. Yep. All freely right. and whittle. No, not things. Freely Wait. and whittle. Free, freely if and you want to whittle. go to freely and whittle. Oh yes, Storm Herald, I will obey your commands. Yes. So so so, so, so Storm Herald commands. So Storm Herald commands. <laughs> Gentle George is like, all hail Storm Herald. Yes, follow my instructions quickly. All right. What do you do? I mean, do they do it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You're in the land of ice cream and milkshakes. Did you have a uh, Did you have a safety word you're going to give yeah. everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Briv is out there. I think he's probably under at this point. We should just end yeah, it Yeah, he's almost foaming at the mouth at this point. <laughs> like, freely, he's like, eh. And you hear him go, milkshake, milkshake, milkshake. <laughs> I doubt he's coming back. Should I end it? No, 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 he's fine, he's fine. He's totally fine. Just look at him. He, he looks asked perfectly fine. me to. He asked you to stop him from hurting anybody, not preemptively murder him. Um, I, I misunderstood I, that. Yeah, there's a difference. <laughs> there, there is a big difference. Um, he's, he's having a dream about milkshakes. He's probably fine. <laughs> really? I mean, what? <laughs> How's your dream going? <laughs> Penelope is like now inches away. All right, you got to do the thing that you wanted to do, and now you're going to do the thing I want you to do. Uh, Side quest leave and number never six. Back? Yeah. <laughs> the... You all feel the entire ship power up. Uh -oh. Is it working? And all of the tendrils start writhing at the front of your ship at this moment. This seems like it's going bad. I should kill him now. Or Kira, you gotta get out of here. You gotta go. Well, not until this is fixed, but I, no, yeah. Whatever's happening to this ship, you can't come with us. You have to All the doors him. closed. No, or Kira! Let's get him out of this. And uh, I'm gonna try to remove the, the thing. Oh, no. 
so you just like yank it out of his head? No, 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 you... no, 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 no. <laughs> Orkira has slightly more. So here, here's the thing: if this takes a little while, Briv will just <laughs> yank it out of his head. I know, I know. Uh, but Orkira will look quickly over at Alindra and be like, "Um, I, I don't have a way of like, I can remove curse. You think that's gonna work? What, what would do? I have any sense of what would make a difference here?" Uh, do, do, do. what's kind of what what does describe remove curse? So, I think what Orkira knows what she wants to have because she has the spell she just didn't prepare it today. So I've got remove curse, which is just um, all curses affecting one creature or, or object end. If the object is a cursed magic item, its curse remains, but it breaks the attunement to the thing. No. But yeah, I don't think she. I, I I know of a spell that I could use that uh, will get rid of like I know um, what to do. And I'm going to touch freely, and I'm going to cast Banishment, and then I'm going to pull him out. Chop the tentacles, Briv. Go. Quickly. I am ready to chop at all times. Yeah, so so Freely has disappeared, because I'm going to assume he's Okay, okay, okay. She uh, banished me off this plane. Uh, oh, Freely, you me. sense Briefly. that someone's trying to kick Here you out of the, the universe, so do you decide to oppose the Banishment? No, I let it go, because otherwise I'm about to have to mess up Penelope, and I don't want that memory. <laughs> 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 you suddenly see all of Freely completely disappear from existence. And Rude. the rules of Bashman is he goes back to his home plane. For a minute. Oh, well, yeah, I guess if I'm not from this plane, I just go there. Yes. Until just like I'm... before. Well, yeah, let me. Yeah. But unlike Destroy before, I'm assuming. Destroy the thing that's here. Please. Quickly, yes. yeah, please I mean, the, 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 the tentacle yes. Freely completely disappears, and there's just a writhing tentacle left. Ah, Briv, get it. You, you slash at it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead and roll an as... attack roll against the, 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 the tentacle. And you kind of see purplish electric energy moving up the tentacle where it was connected to Freely. And it seems to be trying to grow and attach itself to the 20, rest. 26. Okay, you chop it off right before the energy gets like to the base of the ship. As soon as it's chopped off and kick it out of the way, I will drop the banishment so Freely comes back. And then I'm there to like catch head and heal. I will immediately pump uh, healing uh, cure wounds into him. Teamwork. Freely, for for about two seconds, you suddenly appear on Storm Herald and at the makeshift bar with everyone, including the bugbear and the sleepy, sleepy gent gentle George and Oscar, who the omnipresent, who's asleep. Wait, jump the ship. Do it now. I oh my God. No. Did you know? <laughs> like storm herald sentient and it told us to go to this place i'm going there right now do it <laughs> okay and then you disappear <laughs> yes right you're pa and then now you're back <laughs> and freely's back did you play i think so those guys are not very smart and that's saying something coming from me Hey, listen, oh. it's not like we know much more about Storm Herald, and you get 11 hit points back. I don't know if you're hurt, yeah, but she mean, just but... immediately <laughs> grabs your head and... Thou wert this close to getting killed with your <laughs> media blade. I immediately look at Penelope, and I'm like, wait, did I hurt you? They tried to use you against me. I didn't hurt you, did I? Oh, uh, no, you are fine. Whatever it is, you're fine. <sighs> you, even inside of Undermountain, you hear a booming sound. People of this undead land, Storm Herald has arrived. I oh, hit hey. it. I immediately hit the switch on the Nautiloid to take off, like to go <laughs> take the Nautiloid up to Storm Herald. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 take the ship up. Now, do you have all the ref do you have refugees in Storm Herald itself? I mean, the, in in the Spelljammer. My understanding is we were just told all of them to get underground because the the okay. Phoenix was going to scorch the surface, and, gotcha. and and we were just getting out of here. Okay. Should we present them the option before we completely and entirely destroy their planted well, and now, ecosystem and everything else? I Storm Herald could take them all. Can they? Okay, two questions. One, first off, I think the undead destroyed everything. Two, can we? Is there enough room on Storm Herald? I don't know if we have enough food on Storm Herald. I mean, They'll the Nautiloid... Die slow, painful death. The Nautiloid holds 30. I don't know how many people Storm Herald Realistic holds, you tell me. This reality only folds in on itself when it's corrected. I'm... Oh, yes. What? We don't want the multiplicity of adding more people into the multiverse as multiple manifestations of themselves. From an alternate timeline, perhaps? I mean... 
They're, they're still people, though. That's why we told them to get to safety. If we but didn't care, we could have... they're not real people, just... apparently, because well, they're just going to disappear. Well, if we didn't... Or maybe they, just, maybe they just can't come with us to a different plane of existence. Wait, I thought you said they'd be okay if they went down underground. They're gonna. Yeah. Okay, then what's the problem? I don't, I don't think they can come with us. Also, do we really want a whole bunch of people on Stormy Herald if we're going to no, get back not into trouble? Food. Hey, look, I made crazy idea number one, and it worked, so you, I'm deferring the rest of the Phoenix business to you. you well, <laughs> okay, everyone's underground. We need to go get the dragon and the the where uh, hedgehog. The, the were hedgehog. Thank you. Uh, and then you Dibbers. all need to get out of here. I and... am just saying that someone should leave them some lettuce seeds or something because when they come back out from underground, they are probably not going to live. Do you have well, lettuce seeds? No, I do not have lettuce seeds. I do well, not eat lettuce. Where do you recommend that we get lettuce seeds at the moment? I'm not sure. They should be growing something now. They are. They Voss said that they all just live in the Underdark. And there's stuff that grows down there. Okay. People live in the Underdark even when there isn't a whole bunch of undead on the surface. Good enough for me. Yeah, let's go. Alright. Just... You uh, pilot the the, 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 the Nautiloid over to Stormherald and you see Stormherald uh, at this moment and you see the Simulacrum a Averin standing there watching. <sighs> <laughs> like parked yeah. right in the courtyard. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough landing. <laughs> you may may try to find like a better location to connect. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, I mean, may some kind of makeshift thing. But right now, it's just sitting. You land it. It's not even really meant to land on the yeah, ground. Totally. So it's just kind of it's at an yeah. angle, an awkward angle next to the yeah. tree. Yeah, that Penelope it... just planted. And yeah, you ruined the grass again. Yeah, yeah we're 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 after more more haste than accuracy here. <laughs> and, and, and I just look at Orkira and I'm like, okay, so, all right, we got to get Dragon Orkira and the Hedgehog on board the ship. Then you call the Phoenix and we go before she arrives is how this needs to work, right? Yes. All right. And then I'll cast sending and who, who wants the message when it's safe to come back to pick me up? I mean, what, Do don't, you have to come get go, you? don't you have to go Can with us? The, 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 the gate to summon you back to us? I mean, maybe, but I figured... It's going to take a while. I mean, it's an entire planet, so uh, I don't want you all to come back in the middle. And I don't I don't want to just leave if they're in the middle of I, It's kind of rude, you know, summon your god, destroy an entire world, and then leave, ditch them. No, I'm going to stick around. Very much Freely's like, ah, I can stay and fly you out in the Nautiloid. No, 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 you don't. No one stays. I can I'm stay gonna with cast... Spiral. Why? And fly the... Why? Go to safety. I'll cast sending and let you know when it's safe to come back and pick me up. How but are you I gonna nothing live? Would be safe. Yeah. Our god is the phoenix, so it's not. It's not. It's not gonna hurt her. Well, I mean, it will. But and then you watch true. as she. Um, <laughs> she looks like she's gonna face palm for a moment, but her hand lights up with fire, and she just puts it on the top of her head. And I will use my last fourth level slot to cast death ward on myself. And so you watch as. The same uh, flaming wings that came out of a couple of years back a moment ago uh, now come out of mine, and I'm death warded. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Where? Okay. <laughs> That's the plan. Hey, let's, do it. let's do okay. it. Um, where is the dragon orc here? Do we know? <laughs> I think they're back in the in the cave in the mountain, in, right? In Mount Waterdeep. Yeah, uh, the sun has set and it is now nighttime again. And you see the dragonborn Arcara now as you're on top of Storm Herald, circling water deep around and around, setting fire in a circle again and again. Just this constant circle of flame as it flies low to the ground, burning undead over and over again within almost like a five mile radius. And you just see it over and over again. Just dragon fire erupting down onto the ground in a circle. And so this entire, all of Waterdeep is in this strange orange Halloween jack-o'-lantern glow from this constant burning of undead, trying to keep these waves from entering Waterdeep. Is she moving faster than 50 feet? Uh, like, 
could I catch up with her? You you can time it. I mean, like okay. you don't need to be like chasing. She's going in a circle, so I know, I, I, I know Orkira's intelligence is low, but Orkira can probably <laughs> <laughs> she can bisect. I okay. think in about five minutes. <laughs> I, I will. Stay. I will wave at everybody and be like, "All right, um, uh, freely, you're gonna get this ending," and then I will take off and go intercept the dragon, and wave her down and say. We're ready. I need you to go uh, get your hedgehog and go see, see the floating city right there. I need you to go there. Uh, and you, you you promise everyone's going to be safe under the mountain? Yeah, they're all going to be underground, and it's just the surface that gets destroyed. And then I go with all of you? I think so, yeah. And what what happens then? That I have zero idea about. I've been really thinking about this one problem at a time. Yeah, it's it, it, it's better that one problem at a time is good. That's why I say, okay. But you gotta go get your hedgehog and get onto the ship. And then once you're gone, then I'll do one, the thing. Once I stop breathing fire, the undead are gonna rush. Takes me 10 minutes. Try faster. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. All right, good luck. Did you uh, death ward? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be fine. Oh, okay, fine. I just want to make sure. It's really important. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'd like to live through this. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you're not short like a halfling, but, you know, or like, you know, <laughs> they tend to rush in. Okay, well, awkward. Bye. I haven't talked to anyone in like 800 years. Bye. Yeah, awkward. <laughs> awkward. Goodbye. Yeah. I'm going to go get my hedgehog now. <laughs> I will. I'll follow her back because I'm going to uh, cast this on the the side like she's got the the big hole going into the side of the mountain i will sit at the basically the edge of the the entrance to her lair and that's where i'm gonna cast this yeah you 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 fly you see her her long golden tail snaking as she enters into the cave uh burrowing into the cave and you see like the cracks as this giant dragon version of yourself is walking on the stone and everything, every time it hits the ground, it feels like a small earthquake. I'm going to try to ignore that and sit at the mouth of the cave and prepare, or I'll, I'll start to cast the ritual. It takes 10 minutes, so I'm assuming she's going to go in, grab Hedgehog, and leave. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what she's doing. Awesome. Uh, what is everyone else doing? 10 minutes are on the clock. Uh, Penelope will go up to um, Whittle and say, um, Whittle, can I get into your bag, please? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I mean... into it. I just want to get into it. Of, I mean, of course. Are, are you... I'm looking for a bracelet, please. Sure. I don't remember a, a bracelet being in here, but uh, oh, yeah, sure, have at it. Did I put it in Alindra's bag? Uh, I think Alindra might have it. Okay, thank you. I mean, there's uh, a lot of stuff in this bag of holding lots of lip gloss and whatnot, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure Alindra has it. Alindra, can I get into your bag, please? What do you need? I want one of the bracelets, please. For, for what? Uh, I just, uh, you know, just in case. In, in case of what? In case we have to use it. On whom? Well, aren't we supposed to put a bracelet on the dragon? The bracelets belong to me. I was given them by the Norns, and so therefore I think Penelope should have one. Yay. All right. Don't lose this. This is very important. I got it. I got it. Thank you. She Walton, is something like sure. 62 years old. She's not a child. <laughs> and Alindra kind of looks at you and goes... Is something wrong with thine eyes? <laughs> no. 62 is quite young. Freely is in the control booth. The moment Dragon or Akira hits the deck, he's jumping to the Frostfell. Because that's the one, like, the, the Phoenix is about to set this planet on fire. I want not fire. <laughs> we all, if we established nothing terrible was in the Frostfell. <laughs> so we're like, click, boom. That's true. It's yeah. just cold and empty. Mm hmm. But he mm. won't go until the drag because he knows the plan. So it's sort of just like looking, looking at the courtyard, looking at the courtyard, looking at the courtyard. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so the dragon itself, you see the dragon now flying in the sky, holding the dire hedgehog gibber, known as Gibbers. And did you instruct Dragon or Kira to go to Storm Herald or to go to Undermountain? To go to Storm Herald. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I said, see that <laughs> ship over there in the sky? That's ours. Go there. Okay. So, yeah. The, <laughs> so there is a giant spell jammer already on the courtyard of, of Storm Herald. And it's got, it's magical. It's a flying castle. It looks like it's a little, like, tipsy. <laughs> As the dragonborn or Kira, like, lands on it, you all of Storm Herald just kind of goes, <laughs> We're going to jump sideways, man, because I'm hitting the switch the moment she touches down. <laughs> it's it's terrifying. I mean, if the undead could feel fear, <laughs> it's just like, oh, this mountain seems to be, oh, no. And then, boom. I That's worked so hard on that thing. wave as it disappears from the air and wind rushes in to fill this gap where Storm Herald once was. It's like when they jumped the Galactica into orbit. I love that scene. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> One of the best moments in sci-fi history. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just need to take a moment. Uh, I, uh, I spent a lot of years working on that Storm Herald, but you know, it's it's cool. It's, uh, it's okay. We'll fix this one too. It's fine. Yeah, there's steam all of Storm Herald, like, it's like blowing and where, whereas freely you so you're the one who activated Storm Herald. Yeah, you're very adept at flying a spell jammer. You are not so great at flying a castle. And so <laughs> the structural integrity of, of Storm Herald. You've gone from a Ferrari really to an S- You've gone from a Ferrari to like a minivan. Yeah. <laughs> like a like you're you kind of drive automatic. Sure. You, you, you so, gotta finesse it. <laughs> and you're in a semi truck. Yeah. Yeah. Get in there. Get in the gear. There you yeah. go. Anyone can like, drift a landmass. It's freely. <laughs> There's a few cracks in Storm Herald now where steam and some molten lava is just kind of like oozing out. Nothing, <laughs> nothing weird. life-threatening at the moment, but yeah, it was a rough ride. Yeah. I cast Thaumaturgy, so my voice booms through the Storm Herald, and I'm like, still better than what the Phoenix is about to do. <laughs> You at the control center? Yeah. Everyone a constitution saving throw. Because <laughs> Freely doesn't know about this. Oh. The control uh, center uh, doubles. If you're within 10 feet of the score. Natural 20. Hey! Oh, no. And what does a natural 20 do, Mr. Adam Braffer? It allows someone in chat, you're going to see instructions in just a second, to roll on the multiversal magic table. It has all kinds of strange, useful, not so useful effects on it. And you're going to go into Demiplane and roll that percentage die to get us what that effect is going to be. And we'll incorporate it into the game a little bit later when we find out what it is. Excellent. All right. So you are on a steaming lava, lava semi lava filled areas. I'm going to say Freely Rooms. Freely's room is currently on fire. He doesn't know it. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's not free of these room. It's actually Oscar's room that's on fire with a little bit of lava, but uh, uh, everyone's kind of freaking out and like that's a Ramble's problem because like, he's always there. <laughs> you've ang- you've angered the, the, the talking castle. This is the card that you have to not mess with. Powers you don't understand. Why? Who? Uh, anyone fail their constitution saving throw? Anyone get ten or lower? Mm-mm. Fourteen here. All right. All right. Yeah. My minor tinnitus. <laughs> Because Frilly's voice is like way too loud. It's like someone check, check. Check, check. <laughs> it's like this to remind you squeal. Of <laughs> Oof. Yeah. And you feel it in your bones, Freely. You're like, oh, and a little bit of feedback. <laughs> a little bit of feedback on your thaumaturgy. Okay. Uh, what is everyone doing at this moment in the frost fell? Uh, let's go ahead and jump to Orkira. Orkira, you are, what is this ritual that you do and how do you do it? She's sitting on the edge of this entranceway into the mountain, looking out over the encroaching sea of undead. She's got her book in one hand and the, the giant ruby in the other. And most of this is that she's reading the, the incantations out of the book. Um, Although she's had this long enough and done this a couple of times and where she kind of actually knows it by heart, but it's a little nerve wracking. So she's reading and reading and reading. And when she gets to the end of the ritual, 
Um, it turns into a prayer, and like always, she's going to pray out loud and say, Yeah, so just yesterday you were coaching me through primordial pronunciations, and then, yeah, this. It's been a really long, strange day, and so I would really appreciate it if I could pull you away from home for a little while and help destroy some undead. The, the good news is, this isn't complicated undead, like what we've been dealing with. This is this is not a Balnor, and this is none of Vinley's flock of familiars. This isn't even Whittle. After I recover from this, I really want to sit down and chat with Whittle and find out what's going on with her. I mean, everyone at City uh, 7,271,938 loved her and thought she was amazing. So the undead thing can't be so bad, but I don't... Um. Anyway, anyway, my friends are safe. All the people who are still alive are safe, and I'd really appreciate it if you'd come and kill a whole bunch of really uncomplicated undead. And she'll, she, it's, it looks like she crushes the ruby, but what actually happens is if, when the ritual is complete, it just shatters. She's just holding it in her hand. The ruby shatters around your hand and you see all of the little bits of ruby fly around you and then stop in time. And then you feel the fire inside of you right inside your heart and you feel your heart begin to slow and then you feel the fire start to burn and your bones start to liquefy and you just burst with fire and radiant energy out of your eyes and your mouth until all of you dissipates into dust and the phoenix explodes out of you the phoenix rises up into the sky and instantly you start to reform. Yeah, death ward should mean that I don't die this time. What is the what exactly does death ward say? Death ward says the first time the target would drop below 0 hit points as a result of taking damage, the target instead drops to 1 hit point and the spell ends. So, I will take a massive amount of damage and then have one hit point. You, however, willingly made this ritual and this pact with the Phoenix. So for a half second, you do in fact die. Because that's the deal. And there is no cheating your own god. Uh, I mean, if that's, that's what they want, they're the ones that can bring me back anyway, so... You suddenly, as you feel yourself completely disintegrate, you find yourself in the elemental plane of fire. Though this realm feels different, it's, it looks like the elemental plane of fire, but this, you instantly recognize this feels like the afterlife. There's just mountains, volcanoes, flowing rivers of lava, and you are very much Orkir Eldrex dead. Oh, I was kind of afraid that was going to happen. I look around for the actual temple to the Phoenix. You look around for the temple of the Phoenix, which is you see a temple to the Phoenix built into the side of the volcano, made purely of obsidian with tall spires. I don't expect them to be there because if I'm dead, it wor it definitely worked. I'm a little confused of being dead because Death Ward but I, I will head for the cathedral. Well, I don't... Okay, this is uncomfortable. I was so sure that was it's worked before. All right, I guess I'll... Oh, boy, do I know that feeling. Uh, why are you here, exactly? <laughs> and you see Avram pop around a rock. Like, aren't you... I thought you were done dying. Why is this I'm happening not... again? Because, because that's my lot in life. What are you doing here? I'm always here if you, you when you die, l listen, time works differently over here. And I'm just curious, like, what exactly are you doing right now? Well, I thought I was summoning my god and destroying a whole world full of undead and not dying in the process. But apparently I miscalculated. Also, what? Are, wait, hold on. You just show up wherever I die? 
Yeah, no, it's, again, it's a timey-wimey thing. So, for me, it's been like 10 minutes. You just keep on popping in and out of existence over and over and over and over again. We have these conversations over and over and over and over again. So, I thought we had had the last one. I'm expecting this is the last one we're going to have. So I, uh, so I don't wait, know, what? but as long as I've got you here, and she's going to walk on over, and she's going to point at him in the chest and say... So I, I don't know where you're going, what you're doing next, but you need to go and you need to talk to Harold and you need to let him know that it's not his fault that you left. Uh, okay, good. I will talk to Harvar and let him know. Uh, right Harold. Away. Uh, Harold. No, I knew that. I got that bit. Um, Harold. So I'll tell Harold. Uh, not your fault. Got not it. your. No, you. You need to tell him it's not your fault because he's. He was really upset when you left. Okay. And you died, or whatever it is that you did, uh, and and so I promised that the next time I saw you, I would yell at you for him because he was really bummed, and he's been nothing but nice and amazing and kind, and and helped you and me and the whole nine yards. So you're gonna go as soon as this is done. I don't know what's going on, but you're gonna go and tell him that it wasn't his fault and that you just got caught up in stuff, and then you can go back to being you. Okay, excellent. Um, I, I will get right on that. And uh, you gave me a good talking to. Uh, you yelled at me real good uh, right there. Uh, uh, okay, so good. So now, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, not much. Uh, this is, you know, planning retirement with Sophia and everything. Uh, okay, tell her we said hi. I know Whittle was kind of concerned about, well, I think we all were, but, like, tell her we said hi. So this, I will, absolutely. Uh, uh, this bit's going to be confusing. Uh, is it okay you if I touch your shoulder? You say that like any of this hasn't been confusing. Oh, why, why buckle you... up because this is the weird wait, wait, one. Wait, nope. And she's going to like <laughs> ease, ease away just enough and say, why? You teleport with Averin and you are suddenly somewhere else in the afterlife surrounded by a perfect circle of lava all around you at this moment. Flowing around you. There's nothing propelling it, just lava flowing around you at this moment in a circle again and again and again and again, faster okay, this... and faster and faster. This is pretty. What's going on? So this is the last time um, I've got to go. Uh, I, oh, I always wanted to ask you, uh, Orkira, uh, with the wings and the, and the tail, do you find um, you find that to be awkward you feel, feel like uh you're always being watched yeah but i mean look at me must be awkward being watched all the time yeah but i'm the problem isn't the being watched the problem is the being studied i've got the phoenix always watches me and that's nice i like not being alone so it's not that people are watching me, it's that they are staring. I know the feeling. Uh, so when you see Alindra and everyone, tell them I love them. And please remind Alindra that she should be uh, accommodating before you tell her what happened here. Tell Why, everyone I love them. And wait, 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 wait. What happened here besides us just having what I'm, this really... Our interaction. Just tell, yeah, that just says, you know, just tell tell Alindra I love her and tell everyone I love them and Penelope and Briv even. I I mean, love's a strong word, but, uh, you know, Whittle and and uh, Freely. I'm I, sorry I took his hand and all that stuff. Um, you know, we have a saying from where I'm from is uh life is a journey my friend it is sacred be a shield for others from the storm it's a nice saying I, I know how that feels that's why i try to be all right well have a good time destroying a world i don't know quite which one it is uh it's very unexpected seeing you uh and yet you I've... seemed really prepared for me to be here i don't know what's going on but all right uh, oh. Genuinely, I am never prepared to, to be completely honest, but Rekari Eldrex, I am sure you will have everything well in hand. Oh, you're the one that believes that. Okay, that's comforting. All right, I'll tell everyone you said hi. Okay, and bye. I love them. Bye. And you bamf back into, like, yourself. Everyone on the Spelljammer, 
uh, how 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 did you plan on communicating that you were or, or Kira? How did you plan on communicating to everybody that you're okay? <laughs> so uh, I was going to basically either chat with the phoenix or watch, and when it was clear that it was safe, that that they're they're done and leaving, I was going to cast sending and call them back. But I wasn't going to do it right away. And uh, after all of that and coming back from the dead, like is is. Is my body okay, or am I at yeah, one point? Yeah, reassembled and... instantly. You're back. It's not very comfortable. It's it is going to take the Phoenix a while to burn down a planet. So yeah, that's okay. She's gonna she's gonna kind of sit awkwardly because I'm sure it that that's that's a burn that lasts for a little while, and she's gonna just kind of go ah. Mm. Okay, oh, yeah, I've got some marshmallows, and then she's just gonna sit and like. <laughs> eat marshmallows and watch her god work until it, it's safe for them to come back yeah the world is on fire it is burning everybody who is on on storm uh, herald no. or the spell jammer let me know you can take a full long rest if you like because it is going to take a while while for Faerun to burn down faux Faerun as we are going to refer to it uh Faerun Faerun <laughs> I imagine the dire hedgehog gibbers is actively trying to play with Penelope, like <laughs> walking up to Penelope and like knocking Penelope down. <laughs> so Penelope's gonna wild shape into one and play. <laughs> All right, you just see these two roly poly, <laughs> dire, <laughs> enormous uh, hedgehogs just running around Storm Herald, around a spaceship and or. And also a very, very uncomfortable or carry Eldritch as a dragon. Piercings. I'm not going to help. <laughs> uh, Whittle, what are you doing? Are you sitting in your throne in the spell jammer? <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah, uh, I'm sitting on the throne, and I and I noticed that uh, we have a new friend here that doesn't have a, a werebat thing friendship necklace. So I'm I'm gonna make gibbers. A miniature friendship necklace as well and hand it to Penelope so that Penelope can give it to Jibbers. Okay, so you you construct this massive <laughs> dire hedgehog sized necklace out of nothing but werebat fangs. And all right. Go ahead and give it to Penelope. Mm -hmm. Here you go, Penelope, you can pretend like it's from you. Penelope's a dire hedgehog, so she's just gonna take it in her teeth and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I forgot that it's not miniature at all because it is a dire hedgehog. So I make a, a actually a larger uh, friendship necklace. Yeah, I figured it was bigger. Freely, what are uh, Briv? What are you doing, <laughs> Alindra? Freely? Well, Freely's is very simple. He does take the long rest but it's because he literally collapsed and fell asleep in the control room because he has no idea. He's never seen the Phoenix do this. So he didn't know if it was 30 seconds or three hours and was really trying to just be ready. And it's like, yeah, you, you're, you fall asleep on the controls. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. a kid waiting for Christmas. She said <laughs> she was going to send me the sending. So he's really like, no, 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 no. Come on. All right. Come on. No, I got a bag. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. The console has all these little gems and, and, and inlaid with gold and, and, and platinum. And, and you're just like full on middle school drooling all over it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, 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 it's been a day. Okay. It's been a day. I'm sorry. Fell asleep Alindra, in my post. <laughs> Alindra, what are you doing? My plan was to go to the control center to show freely how it worked. So I suppose I walk in and I see him fast asleep and I kind of summon Grant over to help steer. Okay. And I grab the pillow <laughs> and I just put it under Freely's head. I, I, I think, uh, later. <laughs> Aww. Let him take a nap. Tuck him in. Uh, Briv, what are you doing? Briv is training with Spiral and uh, out, out in the cold. So he's trying to take advantage of uh, he, he, he's pretty much like staying out as much as he can and then coming back in just before he dies uh, and, and uh, tr tr trying to like uh, up his res resistance to, uh, you know, high altitude cold weather uh, training uh, with, with his griffin. Suddenly there is in a, uh, I, I, uh, uh, suddenly there is an explosion of wild magic energy completely encompassing uh Alindra, and it kind of like it, it it zaps and electrifies all around you. And freely is like, 
<laughs> like freely, you almost wake up from your sleep, whatever you're dreaming about. And then you feel very compelled. In fact, you feel very, you're, it's almost as if you feel relaxed uh, for a moment. And suddenly uh, you are under the effects of a zone of truth spell. And well, that's all right. I pretty much tell the truth anyway. <laughs> it just kind of <laughs> radiates from you. You just, truth seems to be very important. It feels very important for you, Alindra, to speak your mind now. <laughs> I mean, again, is she not always under that effect? <laughs> <laughs> I would wow. hope so. Law of shade for a, for a sleeping halfling. <laughs> 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 What uh? What is Linda doing now, other than taking care of a nice sleeping I, freely? I, I I just wish she would like burst into Simmons is old. He should have been out of the game years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's, it's it's kind of nice when when you aren't running around, and just <laughs> sitting there sleeping. <laughs> Means you're not pushing us directly into new danger. <laughs> that was a cool sound there. And I go, hmm. I sort of walk out to the courtyard to watch everything that's happening. Okay, you walk out, and there's Orkir Eldrex the Dragonborn. Do you see uh, the, Wait, the dragon? Dragon. Oh, e easy, easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference. <laughs> Uh, you see Whittle with two hedgehogs, one of which has just a giant amount of werebat fangs running around in its teeth. And anyone who is now near, and you're all near Linda, you are all compelled to, tr to tell the truth. What are you doing other than playing with gibbers? Some anyone? <laughs> a dire hedgehog. I can't. Everyone's talk. like, oh god. Oh, suddenly everyone's so quiet. Jeez. That, well, the problem here is that I feel the need to be really honest, uh, which is making me not speak at all, because I gotta filter out. Oh god. Um. <laughs> that's the reason why I bought these boots. Uh, the boots of speed. I bought the boots of speed because I wanted to keep up freely. Because I heard that freely was really fast. There, I said it. Penelope will pop out from being a dire uh, hedgehog and just say, Yeah, well, while we're on the topic of Freely, I just think he's really amazing and he's really, really cool. And I like that he's always, always ready for action and he always I likes don't. to move things forward. He never and lets I... us get prepared. I know, but he just, he keeps things I love moving. Him, but he never lets us get prepared. I, uh... I agree with you, Penelope, 100%, because sometimes I like a little bit of action, even if it's, even if it lands us in a really, Dangerous situation. I just, I get really bored really easily. I don't like to be too safe all the time. And I really like that about Freely. Yeah, you never Freely. know what Freely's gonna do. Yeah, Freely, Freely, he's really cool. And he like any of you going to do. Really? That's fair. Oh. Really? Briv comes out from one of his trips. <laughs> and and he, uh, he, he like w w walks closer and then he's just like, and 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 he uh, starts to put his uh, you know fingers to his head for a second, and I then don't he looks know why confused. He does that. It's, a, it's been years. <laughs> what art he thou still talking know about? That you don't have to do this. Communicate. That is how I focus on mine abilities. Thou art so uppity and so judgmental. We talk about thine owl all the time, but it gets <laughs> its characteristics from thee. I said it. I don't know why I said it, but I did say it. <laughs> and everyone was talking about Freely. He's kind of great most of the time, but he is seriously in need of some kind of therapy to slow himself down just a little bit. Similar from Avon is just sitting it there. Takes one to know with one. A Brave. cup of tea. <laughs> I walk closer to Simulacrum Avon. <laughs> I, I 
Yeah, I'm constantly honest. Anyways, actually, I'm just very, very anxious about the fact that I am very soon probably no longer going to exist. Well, we're trying to work on that. No, I am not trying. <laughs> I believe that thou art probably going to die, just like thou hast resigned thyself to do. Well, I mean, life always is fleeting. So, I suppose that's the point. I think that's what makes it. I miss special. my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I also miss my kids. What What is happening right now? What now, devilry Brooke, I, is this? I really this? like the softest side of you. Tell us more. I want, I've always been kind of curious about your family. Are they, are they like, are they like you? I find it curious that you never talk about them. I never talk about them because I love them so much and it hurts inside every... What is going on right now? Really? There was a burst of magic and suddenly all of us seem to be wanting to tell the truth. Just... Yeah. Freely, you can roll a uh, perception check to see if you wake up as people are suddenly yelling the truth at each other <laughs> <laughs> upstairs. That is a 19. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you wake up, you're like, what? And you're like on a pillow and your face is like half covered in drool. <laughs> Press the digitation, so I'm flawless. <laughs> and you hear you hear screaming from upstairs. Just people saying, "I really like things." <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go too far away from the control panel because I don't know when she's gonna call me. So I'm just like, I, but they could hear me before. I'm just like, ah, uh, are, are you guys okay? <laughs> you hear on the speakerphone, basically, of of all of Star Merrill. Are you okay? It's an amplifier. I am physically fine, but I am emotionally challenged, and I overcompensate <laughs> with bravado. Oh, are we saying obvious things now? I'm Freely, and I'm a halfling. Freely, I want to be just like you when I grow up. <laughs> you can. You, huh, you, this you is nice, going to grow much more, Penelope. That's, that's probably Thou art 62. <laughs> Your, your optimal size for a halfling. I, I think I'm probably way too big for a halfling, in fact. <laughs> but is anybody going to ask why Whittle's a vampire? <laughs> why art thou a vampire, Whittle? Well, it's a long story for uh, another time. I but think I also that thou feel shouldst really, tell us now. I yeah, feel really awkward to tell how I am. I closer to Whittle. Oh, yeah, God. Um, you, weren't, you weren't a vampire last time I saw you. <laughs> What was it? You were having a dream about milkshakes or something? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you're being evasive. That's contrary to healing. <laughs> well, I, I know Kira, Okira wanted to, to talk about it, so I guess now's the uh, best time. Um, when she is not <laughs> when here. When she's not here. <laughs> because I don't want her to get the full truth of it. I, I want to practice telling you all. Or Kira then... shall not judge thee. Only Alindra will do that. <laughs> I have so many regrets right now. <laughs> I wanted to find my friend. Uh, their name is Rend. And I knew that my time on these planes of existence were limited. So I figured if I became immortal, as vampires are, or dompiers, then maybe I'd have more time to find my friend. And so, what is the difference between Dompier and Vampire? One's fancier than the other. Which one is fancier? I'm not sure yet. Probably the Vampire. Oh, that's Exhibit A. <laughs> Thou art fancy. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so, we do know where Rend is, or at least was. So, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Immortality is not the solution to all of life's problems. No, it's just the solution to that one problem. I just needed a little bit more time to figure out where he was. And and, and that's why I got in a tangle with Strahd, because a vampire was responsible for the disappearance of my friend. And so I figured... So you thought the solution would... was to turn yourself into one? No, I thought the solution would be to find Strahd and ask him questions, possibly kill him. That's um, ridiculous. But then in the process... Uh, on my way there, I decided on the spot 
you know, think about consequences later. That maybe if I uh, picked up some of this vampire or dompire blood and drank it, I'd become immortal. Uh, and then I oh. fell through a portal, and, uh, and now I'm here with you all. I'm sorry, that logical process is astonishing. Why didst thou think that the cause of vampire was involved? Oh, I shall go into the mist and attack Count Strahd, and and that's just going to count as all vampires? Well, yeah. Uh, Strahd's the manager of all the vampires, right? So I figured I'd go right to the source. I didn't know exactly what vampire was responsible for taking my friend. Uh, I didn't really get their face or their name. So I, I thought I would just go right up to the top, right? Uh, Strahd probably knows which vampire was responsible for the disappearance of my friend. So now I've got his hand and his throne. Uh, I no agree with yet. Alindra. Very no, no sign of rent. logic. Well, there's, a, there's a lot to unpack there, but uh, <laughs> we're, 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 we're already on our, our sixth subplot. Uh, Penelope, <laughs> you had the bracelets. Did you give one to Dragon or Kira yet? Shit, no, I hadn't done it yet. I was waiting for other or Kira. Oh. It at this it, moment, yes, all of Faerun have been has been lit up like a cinder has, block. She only has one bracelet, just to be clear. I have all of the rest. Uh, Orakira. Hi. Go, have I work? had a chance to take a long rest? Or yeah, yeah, you've been sleeping. Uh, okay. All right. I, I stayed up as late as I could, and then like like a kid at Christmas, I was unable to stay up. Like the phoenix goes to the other side of the planet, just gets dark and quiet. I'm like, ah, oh, this isn't as interesting, and I just fall over asleep. Yeah, you just see explosions on the horizon of fire and flame. Yeah. <laughs> and you're sleeping. I still, I got pretty burnt and like the the death word only does so much, so she she takes a long rest and wakes up just in time to Oh, did I miss it all? Oh. Do I do I see the phoenix anywhere? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you see the phoenix on the horizon and the light goes out. The phoenix leaves the prime material plane. Okay. And goes back home? Yeah. Perfect. Can't even say goodbye? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I don't need them to say goodbye. They don't you say goodbye. Tight. They're always they're always right here. <laughs> they're always with you. Always. They're always with me as long as they're not physically here anymore in order to cause problem cause death and destruction. Uh I will I will take a moment when I see the, the that blink out. I will pray and be like thank you sorry i fall asleep that was a that's a big planet okay uh and then i will do what i said i was gonna do and cast sending too freely and i think i feel about the the the, the, the truth has gone away <laughs> the zone of truth has disappeared and you send your sending try and be feel like everyone's parent and try and keep you from killing yourselves by running into things <laughs> alindra just calm I mean, thine self fine. down Thou hast I'm, to I'm, let us go. I'm calm. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. We shall I'm make terrible calm. mistakes. <laughs> we might all die frequently, but we will all be fine. I'm sure you will. Um, I'm sure you will. I love and appreciate you, and I'm probably still alive thanks to you. So, you know, <laughs> there's that. Who's up? Uh, all right, I'm gonna say there's no truth that's still going on. Uh, what are you yeah, casting that, that was, right now, Akira? Said, by the time she said, said, I'm sure you will, it, it's 100% gone. <laughs> <That's just laughs> yeah, <okay. on> <laughs> I'm casting sending. What is your sending, Orkira Eldrex? I'm sending to Freely, and I will say, Hi, <laughs> it's safe to come back. We're all done. Actually, I think that's all I have to say. Usually I need to say a lot more in this message. That's kind of nice that I have plenty of words to, and then that's all the words. <laughs> you get that message. He, he doesn't even reply. He just hits the switch, and he doesn't warn anybody before he does. Just, <laughs> just like, no. More cracks in the very foundation of Storm Herald, and like, like steam erupts everywhere. Whittle, you're watching like all your hard work just go out the door. <laughs> It's like, as you like, you teleport, and for a hot second, Storm Herald is upside down in a burning husk of Faerun. And then it kind of 
starts to realign yourself. So I need dexterity saving throws for everybody in the group. Well, that's a good thing I'm a mortal now. I got a little bit more time to fix this uh, floating Actually, castle. Actually, well, yeah, I don't need a dexterity saving throw from you because you just climb walls. If you're, you're damp here. within 10 feet of Briv, uh, probably the truth uh, squad there, um, you get plus four. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, freely, if you fail your decks, you're just going to hit the ceiling. It's a 24. Okay, <laughs> you're like, ah, grab on to, like, the steering column. <laughs> Dirty 20. Yeah, an eight. Okay. <laughs> Is it supposed to reappear like that? Uh, Penelope, you slide right, right off of Storm Herald. <laughs> you She's a right bald up hedgehog Herald. just spinning <laughs> into the uh, air. Can, can anyone grab for her? Whee! Can I cast uh, another fall on Penelope? You're you were busy doing the dexterity saving throw, so no, Penelope is just falling. Well, I didn't do a throw because I did. I did. Penelope. Oh, you didn't have to. You're right. Oh, okay. Is she feather falling? Who's casting feather fall? I can't. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you cast feather fall, Penelope. You just start floating, <laughs> and you see all of Storm Herald just go <laughs> back up, and now. <laughs> You are on a level plane again. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Welcome back. Thank yeah, you. or Carrie, you're like, uh, that's not right. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Oh, that's more right. That, that's right. Okay. Okay. Well, that was weird, but that was quick. Okay. And I will stretch and fly on over there. Yay. Yeah, you see a slowly floating Penelope. <laughs> oh, like uh, I thought she got caught by Storm Herald. She's still floating down. No, she's flo yeah, she's floating will, down. Yeah, I you... will angle towards Penelope and get close and say, "Hi, welcome back. Do you need some help?" I am all good. We. Oh, okay. How did it go? Well, take a sniff. Smells it's... like death and destruction. Yep. <laughs> All the undead are gone. Yeah. We know yeah. the smell well. well. Sadly, yeah, I'm I'm kind of very familiar with 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 this. But but uh, very thorough job, right? And I'm just like circling Penelope as she slowly is <laughs> going back towards the surface. Yeah. Took took a while. Sorry. It's been it's been a while since they've had to destroy an entire world like that. Also, I had a really weird experience uh, that I should tell you all about. I okay. guess I promised that I would. So, what is it? Um, can can I bring it back and I can just tell it to everybody at once? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. You mind? Okay. I will take her with uh <laughs> with her permission and fly her back up to the top of Storm Herald. Okay, you grab Penelope and you fly her up. <clears throat> We land. Uh, Hi, everyone. The, the moment her feet touch the deck, <laughs> I'm like, and Frostfell. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't. Uh, really? Yeah, this plane is dead. This plane is cold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my I, God. This plane is cold. Why are we here? <laughs> the director just yells. I put Penelope down, I reach into my bag, I pull up my fuzzy hat, I put the fuzzy hat back on, I'm like, all right, hi. Oh, so you did this to Storm Herald again? Every <laughs> time you do it, Storm Herald cracks more and more and takes structural no. damage. No. Yeah. Yeah, but we're back on like a stable plane of existence because like all of reality <laughs> might be collapsing where we were, so yeah. Fair, valid. Yeah. <laughs> Penelope, it is time. Art thou ready? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Where is thine bracelet? I got it. Um, Wait, what? Oh, Kira, what? you had something to say, though, before we do something else? <laughs> <laughs> no, we shall move forward brashly. Okay. With this wonderful plan of action. Okay, all right. I, I, all right, I'm going to do it. Um, Penelope will walk up to the dragon or Kira and say, oh, Hi, hello, how are you doing? Are you okay? Um, yeah, I guess so. So oh. everyone's... Everyone? I guess everyone's safe now, and they don't need me. Well, that's not true. Um, well, it might be partially true. Well, I mean... Yeah. I think you're... You're only... You're only as needed as... 
Well, no, I don't know how to speak yeah. this. Th not thou good. art as useless as thou... Riv! What? Let him finish. I think he's, he's on to something. Their, their purpose is ended, and now we are going to trap it in this magical bracelet no, and return no. it to the norms. I thought you Wait. were going to say we were going to give him a new purpose. Oh. That's what we no. should have The new said. purpose is to save the multiverse. Yes. What higher calling is there? Okay. Look, Miss Dragon or Kira, um, look. I was going to try to be uh, deceitful and give you this friendship bracelet, which wasn't going to be a friendship bracelet. It was going to be a bracelet that takes you to the world tree and away from all of this. But I decided I'm just going to be truthful with you, okay? Um, this is a bracelet. I'm gonna, if I put it on you, you will go back to the world tree. And I don't know what happens after that, but I just know that we're supposed to do it in order to save uh, the worlds uh, everywhere. Um, I appreciate you being honest, I guess. Um, what's gonna happen? I don't know. No one has any real clue. They are very mysterious. Oh, okay. Well, uh, you saved everyone. So, uh, a deal's a deal. Who's, uh, 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 or, uh Tiny or Kira? I'm just gonna speak up and say I don't like any of this. I didn't agree to helping the Norn at all. In fact, I tried to get us all to leave, and I think this is all a horrible idea because we don't know what's about to happen. There, I've said it. Riv, what do you think? I think it that we have destroyed reality with our careless use of magics beyond our understanding, and they are giving us a way to repair the multiverse. And this is one way to do it. And I would feel differently if other Orkira was not, first of all, real, but second of all, objected to this. But she has agreed. Well, but she's really sad about it. I was sad about... Never mind. What? Nothing. Griff cares about things. I do not. I care. I I care about being the greatest hero that has ever lived. Oh. And things, and people. Okay. Well, now I'm feeling very conflicted. Okay. Um, Penelope will call for the dire hedgehog <clears throat> to come close and say, "Okay, Dragon Rakia, you hold on tight to Jiggers here." A Jiggers. healing potion falls out of Alindra's back <laughs> <laughs> onto the ground. Goes right in that pocket there. Huh. We're probably gonna need that. That's good. Um, so it's Jibber... got a strange little half smile on it, like a smirk. <laughs> Tucks it away. Um, so hold on to Jibbers here, okay? Real tight. Um, okay. Uh, I'm glad you had, fr you, or Carrie, you had friends. I am too. I'm sorry. It must have been nice. Well, you have friends now. I'm gonna pick up a piece of rubble that I realized had gotten into my boot while we were down on the ground. Um, you never met me, so you don't know what a homestone is. But one of my families believes that as long as you have a piece of home, you are always home. So this is a small piece of your home. You can take it with you. You'll never be lost. Just You'll have the place you loved. Out this massive gold dragon claw that you could fit inside and just tiny little pebble grabs the pebble all right well um Briv's in the background shaking out both his boots at this point <laughs> rocks are just hitting the deck thunk 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 <laughs> some of it's not even rock some of it's stuff from the wear the, the wear back cave <laughs> uh, Freddy, can you help press to digitate that please 
And okay, well, um, I don't like long goodbyes, and uh, thank you for saving the people I care about. And um, thank you, being thank you, I guess, for being there for one of us or both of us. I'm confused. Uh, hey, um, I, Dragon or Kira? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name's Whittle. We never got a chance to formally meet, but... Oh, hi. I'm uh, I'm, I'm Rokera. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry that we didn't get more time to get to know one another, but um, I just want to let you know that you're really brave. I'm sorry that we put you in this situation. We were careless with magic. We jumped through a whole bunch of portals, and I'm pretty sure that's why you're here. And hands Dragon or Akira a friendship necklace of where a bat things. Where do you put the friendship necklace? Can I, it, if it's okay with you, um, I have this friendship necklace for you. I'll, and she just reaches around and connects it behind just Dragon this, or Kira's neck. You just take this, along, around this massive golden dragon's neck, you tie this friendship necklace. I probably necklace. have to climb up. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> sorry. This is more awkward than I thought it was. Sort of just spider climb around its neck and, and tie it off. <laughs> and it's a tight fit and it's just <laughs> teeth. Just teeth, 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 teeth <laughs> sticking out. Well, it's, it's more of a choker than a, a necklace, but. Um... Yeah, no, it's okay. My voice is a little deeper than it was before now. <laughs> um, okay, well, thank you, Will. Uh, and she climbs can I, down. Can I just tell you one thing? Because, uh, Honestly, I don't know what happens when you put that bracelet on. Maybe nothing. Uh, and maybe you're going to go back there. But from from what I understand, uh, in in Asgard, they, they believe in in a glorious afterlife for heroes. And, and you fought to save your whole planet. So uh, I think whatever is going to happen, you should be okay. I think that thou dost only get there if thou dost die in battle before thou dost go. And so... I I, sh I can give thee an honorable day. Yeah. Uh, Orkira walks. Is in between... what I would want. Yes, Orkira walks in between Briv and the dragon, uh, like intentionally breaking eye contact, and then walks up to the dragon, and as softly as she can, without anybody else hearing it, but the dragon says, "The phoenix believes in second chances." Which is why I'm still around. If that bracelet does bring it back to the Norn, and they try to get you to do something you don't want to do, just go ahead and burn the whole place down. We can start over. Oh, oh okay. That feels extreme, but oh yeah, okay. I'm uh, sorry. Oh, Kira? Mm -hmm. I think you're the bravest person I know. I think I'm just surrounded by a lot of people who are braver than I am, and I just try to keep up, but thank you. I'd like to go now. <laughs> I'm ready. Hold on to Jibbers, okay? Real tight. Um, just in case something happens, can you keep Jibbers? Yes, absolutely. Will you promise to take care of him? One hundred percent. He likes snakes. <laughs> like I to eat, too. not not to keep as pets. And Jibbers is really hungry, so you gotta feed him a lot. Uh, not always snakes. He eats anything, but just just take care of him. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Penelope will look down at this bracelet, which probably doesn't look like it's big enough to fit around a dragon. As you approach, it gets larger and larger and larger and larger. <laughs> I go up and I put my hand on Dragon or Kira's shoulder. And and Whittle walks over towards Dragon or Kira and says, Hey! Why a dragon so amazing at making music? Uh, I don't know why. Penelope. 
Uh, Go ahead and put the bracelet on. Okay. They really know their scales. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles for a brief second and winks out of existence. Seeming not of existence, but teleports away. Did we do the right thing? Or Kira no, walks away. We shall not know until this is done. Is something supposed to happen now? We have to go find the others. How do we do that? They said our carelessness created these, so we must find other planes of existence and find our other duplicates. You know what? Being a hero feels good a lot of times, but right now it doesn't feel very good. I'm really proud of you, Penelope. What you just did was really difficult. I don't think we had any other choice. I just wish I knew what is going to happen to her. We can go ask the Norns. Orkira's walked away. Uh, and she's going to go find a quiet spot somewhere else. Not near anybody. And sit down. And she's going to uh, cast Commune. Okay. And she's going to ask the Phoenix. Did the dragon version of me just get destroyed? No. Are we supposed to be doing this for the Norn? It's a uh, kind of ambivalence. You get that sense? Do I need to go and confront the Norn? No. And that's her three questions, and she'll just sit with those answers. And okay stretch and ease her aching muscles because you know exploding hurts that is true that's accurate what is everyone doing gonna be taking care of gibbers if gibbers is still here okay when i um have time i want to swap a spell out okay <laughs> Uh, everyone can get the benefits of a short or long rest if they want to. Um, another one, or is this the one that happens? This is, uh, this can be another one, yeah. And, um... You are in the Frostfell. It is very, very cold <laughs> outside, but you are safe in the Frostfell. Is there, uh, like, a central unit? Or like, how is the, uh, castle heated? We have a lot of fireplaces. Or... Yeah, maybe there are plenty of fireplaces. There, there's plenty of chimneys. And there is somewhat of a magical bubble that can keep things from completely freezing over. So In the in either, uh, if I uh, either cast an accommodating abode or uh, a, a private sanctum, it, it helps control the temperature as well. Okay. If you need that. Or Carol will spend a very long time sitting off by herself, just kind of mulling over everything that happened not happy at all and eventually the guilt over not telling everybody what she promised Avrin that she would will overcome her and she will return to where everybody is uh, probably like an hour or two later shivering Okay. where you know in the accommodating abode and say so I meant to tell you about something that happened while you were all gone um, I saw Avrin. Uh, 
I was kind of expecting more of a reaction from that. Okay, all right. Uh, I appreciate the the pause. Well, what, what did uh, what did Avern say? Um. Well, after I yelled at him because of leaving Harold, um. He was in the elemental plane of fire, which doesn't make any sense. He was talking about how he just shows up whenever I'm dead, which has got to be really tiring. Anyway, he he said he was he and Sophia's were going off, um, and I I told them to say that we said hi, um, and he said that he and Sophia sends his love to all of you. Yes, even you, Briv. Um, So Avery actually said he loves all of you, and then. He said, he gave me some wise words about how you, know, you try to be a shield from the oncoming storm. And... And Orkira will look over to Lindra and say... And he said that's probably going to be the last time I'll see him. And then I was alive again. So, I don't know. He seemed worried that you weren't going to take it well. But he did say he loves you. Little furrows her brows and decides that she's not ready to ask more questions and walks over to the furnace that she built on Storm Herald. I'm okay. Thank thank you for the update. I'm gonna go to the control room and get get these uh, heating elements firing up, and goes to the control room and uh, it's actually a series of fans throughout um, the whole ship um, and she throws a fire bolt into the main fire pit in the control room and the series of fans blows this hot air all throughout the ship for us okay there's I'll a s- vent right like wherever we've been sitting and I've been telling you about this is a vent right there and like a cat or Kira just moves over and sits <laughs> on top of the vent <laughs> Still serious, still like looking at everybody, but just freely. When I have a chance to swap my spells, I load up sending. Okay. And I'd like to message Thor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, weird. How? Uh, what's the reading on sending? Like, do you just need the person's name? I just need, just need to know them, and and I can reach them across planes. And I well, saw him. Saw him. I, I saw him. <laughs> Yeah. And it was confirmed by Loki who that was. So you, mm-hmm. that's why Orkira thinks she could cast sending to him too. Mm-hmm. Okay. All Technically, right, well. I showed all of them a minor illusion of his face, but yeah. Right just... before you do that, were you going to do something important, Briv? <laughs> <laughs> Briv is just like, that's not he, ominous. <laughs> he, he looks a lot uh, around and says, just for the sake of everyone present to make sure that everyone is completely looped in and that everyone understands. Can someone explain what any of that that Orkira just said means? Because I, I, some of us may be very, very confused by it. I was a bit confused myself. I don't know exactly what's going on. I think he and Sophia are going back into retirement, which might mean death, but it's them, so I don't know. But anyway, he says he loves you. I don't think there's more to it than that. Oh. Uh, oh, well. oh, see, he did tell you to, he did ask you to tell Alindra something that I don't think you said. Or was yeah. that intentional? <laughs> no, none of that's, if I've forgotten something, that's not intentional. It's just been, <laughs> it's, there's been a lot going on. Um, it was to tell Alindra to don't, not to take it, not, it wasn't not to take it personally, but it was something like that. I mean, it's it's been eight hours, or Kira would remember. It's been uh, twenty minutes, and Lauren has forgotten. So apparently, my intelligence is lower than or Kira's. What was there anything that I? <laughs> it was specific. I, uh, I sent some it was stuff specific in chat wording. To you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which chat? Where uh, am I? Demi plain chat. True. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I mean, in general, I try not to take notes to somebody else's side scene because technically <laughs> I don't know. But no. everybody did say. No, you're, it being, you're just being you're being a good, a good fellow player. <laughs> no, I appreciate it because I was I was super trying to just. Uh, you know, it, it is very on brand though that Orkira is like, no, that pretty much covers it. You know? <laughs> no, no, that's what happened. Yep. <laughs> I'm not. I am not seeing. 
which chat is it in? It's uh, I, between do you, you and me. It... Private chat between you and me. Okay. Just click, click on Todd. Yeah. Just oh. click on Mr. Todd. Do you want Demi... me to just put it in chat, Todd? I Demi do playing. It's like Cause... we're all learning. How... Oh, here we go. Here we go. There's a, okay. a number of chat options. There's three different windows to interact with each other. Chat it's everywhere. Uh... You got it? Okay. Yeah. I'm d okay. Okay. Um... Or Kira will be uh, poked mentally by looking at Alindra, looking confused, and Briv asking these questions, <laughs> and take a second. Uh, sorry, I was um, dead and confused at the time. Let me think about this for a second. Uh, he specifically, oh, the thing that I said, that he, he, he had a, a saying that was about being a shield for an oncoming storm. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was life is a journey, my friend. It is sacred. Be a shield for others from the storm. Which I thought was kind of a nice sentiment. Um, and that was the thing that he said, Alindra, that you... He said to tell you to be more accommodating, but... I mean, I think you're super accommodating. And at that, her eyes light up. Light Just up with... Give, give me ten minutes, please. Okay. And she starts casting Alindra's Accommodating Abode. You cast Alindra's Accommodating Abode. Where did you learn this from? From my father. How old were you when you learned this? Little. I mean, he started teaching me when I was very, very young how to cast this because it was a way for me to protect myself and him a lot of the time uh, because half the time he'd come home you know beat up and bleeding um, <laughs> I, so I, I learned young how to protect rather than fight in this case how to shield uh, us both um, and Sophia's too when she was when we were with her um, from prying ears and eyes uh, and those that would do us harm. Okay, you cast it. And I cast Linda's Accommodating Abode. All right. Is there anything that it looks like? It come, does it, is everyone together? Uh, Technically, I haven't sent my sending yet, but yes, sure. I mean, yeah, I'm well, it's a big sending. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the yeah. delay on No, that. I get oh, it. I well, get it. actually, yeah. go ahead and send your sending right now. <laughs> because there can well, be a delay. Well, here's what he Freely sends. <clears throat> uh, hi, Thor. I'm Freely, and your brother Loki tricked me into stealing your hammer. Then we got kidnapped by the Norms, so I'm very sorry. <laughs> and that's exactly 25 words. <laughs> I'm so impressed. The one in Asgard, there's this kind of blonde, reddish haired man, just massive, almost eight feet tall, just brimming with muscles. What? <laughs> Does that mean he and hasn't the noticed of his hammer thunder and lightning? <laughs> like you all hear thunder around Storm Herald for a moment. Yeah, I and thought that I thought that might happen. <laughs> accommodating abode is cast. <laughs> and by this time Will has come back up now that she's got mm -hmm. the heat system working. Okay. So, so I you will... are all Yeah, uh, I will cast this only allowing our friends to enter it okay Brave slams so. into the door <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I adjust it so that Briff can enter <laughs> oh. Briff can be somebody oh, so, so judgy so judgy Linda is accommodating shade <laughs> <laughs> Gonna rename that spell. Uh, all right, everyone is in the uh, in the spells. Like it Radius. may not be very sunny in the frost fell, but there's plenty of shade inside the accommodating about it. Yep. I'll, I'll enter and look at Olinda and say, "I'm sorry if I like messed up the message. I didn't know he was trying to send a message no, to you. you I right. you got it exactly right. I would. Well, it took you like prodding me for more because it, it was. I'm not good at remembering that kind of stuff. But I don't know why he tells me things. The important things. Oh, okay. I still do not have a clue about what is going on. Would someone it helps, like neither to do I. In? I mean, I never understood half the things Averin was saying and when we were just talking and you were dead, so no, I get it. 
I mean, what's going on right now? Are we having a sleepover or something? <gasps> sleepover! Sleepover! Or oh, something. Huzzah. Um, something. now that we're in here, um, Okira, do you want to try and deliver the message again? Okay. Tell us what he said, see if something changes. She'll kind of glance around the the hut and say, all right, if you think so, um, you want me to just say like the, the, the whole saying or the whole thing about me yelling at Harold? Like, do you think that's important? I mean, cause I did kind of yell at him. I felt bad about it afterwards, but not really because I promised Harold I would do. No, it's probably not important. Oh uh, no. Uh, okay. I, I, sh I shot him last time I saw him and nearly killed Simulacrum. So I, <laughs> it's in, no, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, I, I've been saving onto that promise for a while. Uh, no. So we ended up in, um, we were in the elemental plane of fire. And then he took me to a place that was surrounded by lava, which was actually kind of nice and kind of pretty. And then he said he was going away with Sophias and that they love you. And that, that, uh, and they love, and he mentioned each of you and that he loves y'all. And um, he said that life was a journey and it's sacred and to be a shield for others from the storm. And that's when he told me to tell you to be accommodating and then he also asked me some creepy questions about being watched all the time who's Does watching you thing ring different sometimes it feels like somebody's watching me he, he like you got no privacy He was asking me about how people are always watching me and it must be hard to be watched all the time. And I'm like, well, but I got the Phoenix and that's, that's a nice watch. You know, everyone's just kind of staring. Is that what you needed? Did I need to say that in here? And she looks around. Did, did Avrin have a certain room in here? Cause it's the same every time, right? Hmm. Usually, yeah. Uh... I go to wherever Avrin's room would have been, and I'm all like, I mean, if he's been in here this the whole time, I just... <laughs> <laughs> no, you... Uh, yeah, you go to his... Good lord, did he ever have a room on Storm Herald? I don't think he did. Well, this is inside the accommodating abode. Oh, in the accommodating abode, right. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Um... The accommodating abode, though, is kind of just a bubble. It's yeah. not really... Oh. It's not oh. It's not the, the magnificent mansion. It's just ah. a... It's kind of a... It's an upgraded tiny hut, right? Yeah. Got it. Um. Mm. I mean, I, I seem it's been a while, but I I want to say that Avern had a room, and uh, there was a big garbage can, uh, full of various parts. He seems to set those up wherever he resides. Yeah, that's well, back in Wildmount. I don't want to go back there. He yeah. should just throw himself into it. Well. I mean, we we know where he ends up. It's up those like weird stairs. I don't know how to like get up them again. But like, there's that place with all the dead gods and the tree, and he and Sophia stay there for all time. Yeah, I don't want to uh, go back there either. Yeah, no. And pro tip: do not pick up any swords there. No Although, swords, no going back there. I guess while we're you know uh, sharing things with each other, I just kind of wanted you guys to know that uh, I messaged Thor and apologize. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, that good. was very kind nice. of me. Yeah. Oh. yeah, well, you know, I didn't mean to steal his hammer. I'm sure he's upset about that. And I uh, <laughs> so, so just wanted wanted him to know. At least now he knows Loki has it. Probably assumed Loki had it. But, you know, now he knows. And I'm sure we will never hear anything about it again. And I'm, at I'm that sure moment, he appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this from outside the dome. Uh, we can see out, so. Yeah, you see this incredibly tall muscular man with a long beard and long hair all in scale mail and a long flowing red cloak we need to make sure this is the right one this time yeah so which of you stole my hammer and the lightning erupts all around storm herald 
and that's where we're we're gonna leave off. <laughs> it was him. I was about to say, I just hand the sword to Brave again. I'm like, okay, all right, here we go. You know? I, never right, even, I, I never even met that happening. <laughs> Let's go around the horn before we say goodbye tonight. We'll start with uh, the star this evening. I think uh, Miss Lauren Urban. Me? I'm sorry. No, I totally thought it was. The, the bunch of you all hanging out telling the truth to each other. And I kind of said that. It's that true. <laughs> you got uh, the Death Star planet. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I just sat eating marshmallows while my god did all the work. Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the community manager for Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You should come play in our game because you can play as almost all of us in, in the game and it's way less confusing and there's way less death. <laughs> Megan. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Kenrick, and I just kept imagining freely on Storm Herald with that Tokyo Drift song as he's drifting my castle ship into a mountainside, but no worries. Um, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Megan Kenrick, and Todd and I are coming out with a new video every week where I interview him about all things D&D on his channel, uh, Todd Kenrick, on YouTube. Awesome. Jen? Hey, I am Jen Kretschmer. Um, I am on Twitter as at Dreamlist. I am on Twitch as Dreamlist Jen. Um, I am one of the authors on Candlekeep Mysteries, the newest hardcover from D and D. Um, and I'm also the creator of the Accessibility in Gaming Resource Guide. Um, I am doing a bunch of cool things coming up. Uh, if you follow me on socials, you will get updates on all of those. It's the best way to, to keep up with with the new things. Mr. Walters. Hello, B. Dave Walters. I say words about things. You can find me all over the place wherever fine streaming content can be located, including Monday mornings uh, for Idle Champions, uh, but also Thursdays at 4 for the Black Dice Society. Yay! Yay! On uh, the D&D YouTube and Twitch. It's our Ravenloft horror game. And Hope. I said your real name. Just remember. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Hope. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle, where you can... Uh, find out all the stuff I'm doing. I play D and D for uh, Attackers of Opportunity, which is a podcast you can find anywhere podcasts are found. And uh, this Sunday, I'll be playing a one shot with TJ Storm uh, with uh, Chasing Tales, and it'll be a really fun one shot. I'll be playing a really cool badass druid who's like the opposite of Penelope, so it'll be really fun to kind of play. <laughs> False. She's Penelope's already pretty badass. Pretty badass. Yeah, yeah right. Penelope's yeah. amazingly badass. Don't do not sell Penelope short. <laughs> and Todd. I'm freaked out still that you said Mr. Walters. I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Uh, Walters is my father. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I, feel like, I feel like we're all in trouble now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 everybody roll. Well, everybody roll initiative. <laughs> oh, this is the worst math class ever. Uh, I'm Todd Kenrick. I have a, a wonderful channel with my wife, Megan, and we talk about thing, all things D&D, &D, and we're on this show, and I'm the creative manager over at Idol Champions, and I do consulting, and I do all kinds of other secret stuff I can't even talk about. I'm under constant NDA, but you'll find out one day. Uh, yeah, thank you all uh, for being in this game. I hope everyone had fun. These are all amazing players. You should follow them on Twitter, on the internet. Um, I'm very thankful for all of them, and they're just amazing role players. And I don't have to do anything. I just can just sit here and watch. Absolutely. Whoa, that's, somebody. That's me oh, they're just freely on my, on my show again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm outside of Jen's apartment. Well did, timed. Well did timed. you just soup up the engine on Storm Herald while I was gone? This no, is amazing. Yeah, no, we I broke it and we probably need to fix something before we all go crash. Like, <laughs> I, I dropped it down. I put ground effects on it. Like, it's nice. It's nice. Freely, for... a cherry bomb isn't actually made out of cherries. <laughs> Freely's just <laughs> spitting demon icer into the exhaust pipe, like in, into the intake engine of Storm Herald. It's Witness Wait, me. If you put ground effects on Storm Herald, are they on the ground ground or are they on like the top of the Storm Herald? Is it no. actually upper effects? <laughs> it's, it's sky effects. Oh, what sky a lovely effects. day. What a lovely day. Follow all of these individuals. It is such a joy to get to play with them every single week. <laughs> Follow them, subscribe, everything in all the places. I'm Adam Cidio at Demi Plane, and we will see you next week. Later, Gators. Bye, everyone.